Welcome to the Reach College Podcast with your guest speaker, Sam Miller. Is there any amount of sin that you and I can commit that will separate us from the love of Christ? God knows us completely. Okay, if you guys want to turn with me to uh, Philippians chapter 3, that's going to be our, our text this morning. Um, you know, as you, as you walk with the Lord, um, you, never, you never graduate from the gospel. Um, and so as you're walking with the Lord, you, you, not only does God reveal to you more of his grace and goodness, but he also reveals to you more of, of, of the reasons why you need it. And so earlier this year, um, <clears throat> God really, like, God gave me, like, this awareness about just uh, about uh, an insecurity that I have. And I, I became, I started to become, like, really hyper aware of, like, gossip and, like, whether or not people were, um, like, talking about me. And, and listen, like, no, like, none of, the, none of that was true. But I just, like, occurred to me, like, I, I, there's a part of me that cares a whole lot about what other people think of me. Um, and, and to the point that I, that there's a, there's a part of my heart that actually cares more about, about, uh, other people seeing me as a as a good Christian, than than sometimes even like actually being Christian, right? Um, and so, really, the the solution to that that sin problem was uh, was a deeper understanding and application of a truth that I already know uh, and believe. Um, and like, and and on top of that, like if you. If you actually think about that for for any like amount of time, like it's just really silly. Like, because like what because what it means to be a Christian is to point people to Jesus, and like the, the the way that we do that is through our sin, right? I mean, like we our our sin is what uh, and and God rescuing us from that is what testifies to people the the goodness and grace of God. And so like being concerned about like what other people think is just not like it. it doesn't doesn't make any sense. So, um, and and so that's how God brought me to this text. He he just reminded me of of a deeper truth in the gospel. Um, and so we're going to be in uh, Philippians chapter three this morning. Um, we're going to start in verse one. Paul says, "Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord." To write to you the same things is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Now, when I um, initially, when God brought me to this text, this was not one of the verses. Okay, um, typically when I read a verse like this, it honestly like frustrates me because I I don't read verses about joy and and rejoicing like like that's what I want to do. Okay, um, and part of that, and 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 I'm 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 glad that I can say that I was kind of rebelling against my misunderstanding of like what this is talking about, not actually like what like what Paul is really referring to. So I, I want to talk for a for a second about about what Paul's talking about when he talks about to rejoice in the Lord. because um, that really like sets us up sets us up for um, like what what's coming next, okay? Um, so like what what is Paul talking about when he talks about rejoicing? Well he's not talking about being chipper. Right, he's not like. I mean, and if you know anyone that's just like chipper all the time, they kind of bother you, do they not? I mean, it's like how, like why, like you just especially like. And I just think of that proverb like about uh, what is it like a joyful greeting in the morning is considered a curse. It's like yeah, because it is. Um, and so I think yeah, I don't like I don't want to like wrestle and manipulate my personality to like be like I just I I just don't want to do that. And that's and and thankfully. That's, that's not what Paul's asking us to do um, or, or calling us to. And so uh, what Paul means by rejoicing is not uh, to like muscle or force like a, a happiness or chipperness. What Paul is talking about is an attitude of serenity. He, Paul is talking about an attitude of calm and peace um, that comes from the Lord. And so, okay, um, 
And so the, the, the question the question that arises, where does this come from? Well, Paul says, in the Lord. And so Paul actually gives us a really incredible example of this. Um, in uh, Philippians 2, you can turn, or uh, sorry, Philippians chapter 1. Um, if you want to turn there, verses 18 through 21. Uh, Paul says, yes, and I will rejoice. So like last, last part of verse 18. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not at all be, not be at all ashamed, but that, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay. So Paul clearly has has this attitude of rejoicing, right? And so what what Paul is talking about here is so so let's 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 talk about more broadly Philippians. Paul is writing to the Philippian church while he's in prison in Rome, and while Paul has essentially been forgotten by the Roman churches, um, Paul is well received by by Christians in Rome. But as time went on, they forgot about him because the leaders of those churches, uh, it seems, um, were were proud and arrogant and self-righteous and just abandoned Paul. Like Paul, um, Paul talks later in, in a, I believe, a, a Timothy letter that uh, what like one of his coworkers in in the in the work of the gospel actually had to go find him. Like nobody knew where he was. Um, and so uh, Paul, Paul here is all, although he's in prison, Paul is able to rejoice. Uh, and 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 listen, Paul's Paul's rejoicing is not contingent upon his circumstances, right? Paul, Paul says here, he says that, and, and so he says that uh, this will turn out for my deliverance. Now, if, if, we, if we're paying attention to the next few verses, Paul actually defines what he means by that. He said, it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be ashamed and that, that Christ will be honored whether I live or die, All right? So what does Paul mean? So it seems that Paul, when Paul's talking about not being ashamed, he's not, not only is he saying that, is he, I think, talking about that he himself will be empowered to stand for the truth, but in fact, the truth will, will have it say, the truth will be revealed to be what it is, which is true, right? Secondly, Paul says, Paul, Paul says, whether I live or die, Christ will be honored. So Paul, so what Paul is saying is that to be delivered, that Paul rejoices because he knows he will be delivered, which means that that for Paul to be delivered means that he will be able to stand firmly in the truth and that Christ, and through that, Christ will be honored. Like, that, like that's, that's crazy, right? I mean, so, so, so much of the time when we think about, about like it, it, even just the realm of positive emotions, they're contingent on our circumstances. But, but for Paul, this is just being, being faithful to, to, his, to, to Christ. Um, and so then that begs the question, like, what is it about the Lord that Paul says, rejoice in the Lord? And what follows is a, is, is Paul's, um, is an exposition of the gospel. So back in chap- chapter three, we're going to start, start again in verse two. He says, look out for the dogs, look out for the evildoers, look out for those who mutilate the flesh, for we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Okay. Wow. Gospel, right? Um, so this is, this is actually really interesting. Like Paul goes from re- like rejoicing the Lord, then starts talking about like dogs, like this group of people that clearly Paul does not think well of. Okay. Um, and th- this is interesting um, because I... So, like, before Paul t- starts talking about the gospel and, and what it is about the Lord that we're rejoicing in, Paul first begins with, with uh, making people aware of actually a heresy that Paul has had to deal with numerous times. Okay? So this seems to be something, some group related to the Judaizers, which if you um, don't know who they are, they are um, a group of Jews that essentially would come behind Paul and say, hey, listen, it's great that you found Jesus, but you, but what you, but if you're going to be like a like a super Christian, you need to like adhere to all these laws, like all these Jewish uh, regulations and so forth. And what Paul will say, like adamantly, in in uh, in in uh, in other letters, particularly Galatians, is that if we take on a heresy, if we take on something 
other than Christ uh, that we think will, will reconcile us to God, we do not belong to him. So this is interesting. Um, uh, uh, is, there, is there any amount of sin that you and I can commit that will separate us from the love of Christ? No. Ho- hopefully your, 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 your immediate answer to that is no, absolutely not. But if we reject Christ, Paul will say we, we do not belong to him. We, Paul will actually say in, um, in uh, Galatians, Galatians yeah, 5, 4, he will actually use the phrase, you have fallen from grace if you take on this heresy. If you, if you take on something that is not Christ, anything, anything that you take on that, that you think reconciles you to God that isn't Jesus means that you don't, you don't actually have Jesus. And so, and, and so Paul actually will, like the language that he uses, he talk, calls them dogs, evildoers, mutilators of flesh. Um, Paul is actually like, go, like make, taking some effort to associate what, what would have been considered um, like unclean and, and uh, like derogatory language to communicate that these people think that they're the people of God, but, they're, but actually they're not. Like they, they're, they're pretending to be. They, they want um, all the, all the uh, religious um, trappings of what, of what it might look like to belong to God without actually belonging to God. So in, um, and Paul talks about this more directly in Romans chapter 2. You don't have to turn there, but you can just listen to this. Um, chapter 2 verse 25 says this. For circumcision indeed is of value if you obey the law. If you break the law, your circumcision, your circumcision becomes uncircumcision. For if a man who is uncircumcised keeps the precepts of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? Then he who is physically uncircumcised but keeps the law will condemn you who have the written code and circumcision but break the law. For no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcision outward and physical, But a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart, by the spirit, not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. And Paul will go on to say about the Philippians and about those who actually belong to Christ, those who are actually the people of God, he will say this, for we are the circumcision. So there's, there, there are, um, I, I, Apparently, two different words for circumcision. There's one word that actually associates you with the covenant people of God, and there's another word that just like literally just means like like flesh mutilator, like it's a derogatory term. And so Paul, again, Paul is going through great lengths to say these are we we are not the same. We are not the same group. Um, and then and then and, and Paul will go on in in the next few verses here. You will say, though, and in verse four, though I myself have a reason for confidence in the flesh, also. Okay, so this is interesting. You like, you don't. I guess when you, as you're reading this, and especially I think if you if you've grown up with the gospel, you don't. You, you maybe like, you're. This sounds confusing. Well, because you think, well, but there is no righteousness apart from Christ. It doesn't exist. But then Paul will use that same language to say, well, no, but I. I mean, but I. I have reason to. Like, okay. So Paul, Paul goes on. Um, he says, if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, he says, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Okay, so what Paul is saying here is he, so there, there are two categories of, uh, of, of Paul's what he, of, of what Paul's calling his, his right, his, so to speak, righteousness. There are inherited attributes here, and there are achieved attributes. Um, okay. Um, okay, he'll talk about being of the people of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, so he's saying that he, essentially he's saying he's of the covenant people of God, and additionally, this is a, a reference back to the uh, civil war in Israel. The Israel uh, and Judah engage in civil war. They split into the northern tribes of Israel and the southern tribes of Judah. Benjamin is a part of the southern tribe of Judah, which was um, which was uh, pretty pretty radically more faithful to the law, 
to their their covenant, um, the Mosaic covenant, than the northern tribes. So Paul's like two. Again, Paul. This is this is Paul's claim to fame, and he he inherited this, right? Paul didn't do anything to earn that. Um, he says talks about circumcision and and his being circumcised on the eighth, on the eighth day. Says this. Um, Paul was. Um, Paul was was neither a a proselyte, meaning a convert to to Judaism, nor was he an Ishmaelite. An Ishmael um, was the first uh, son of of Abraham, not son of promise, but he was he was circumcised on the uh, I think when he was uh, when he was thirteen. Okay, which is not which is not according to to Jewish law or according to the promise. Okay, so Paul is is saying that he is he is a, a Hebrew of Hebrews. And then as for his, uh, his achieved works, Paul's, Paul says he is a Pharisee and a persecutor of the church. So a, a Pharisee, as I'm, I know many of you know, is like the, is, uh, uh, had the strictest adherence to the law. And on top of that, like if, if, if there was a group of people like, like Christians who were uh, talking about faith in God but but not adhering to the law Paul was persecuting them and so Paul was was passionate about this kind of righteousness but he says in verse 7 whatever gain I had I counted as loss for the sake of Christ indeed I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord for his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. Okay. Um, so Paul is saying this. Whatever, what, whatever one might think are the like religious... Um, spiritual, like excessive, um, like duties of, of of belonging to God. He says it doesn't matter. Um, he says the only thing that matters is that is is that you know Christ. So and and it's interesting. Like if Paul, Paul in some sense is saying like yeah I've I've got it like I've got the accolades I've got the I've got the resume, but he gives that up. And it's interesting. Like what like it's interesting to consider why did God set it up this way it's interesting to consider that um because if like if if in some sense you you as paul seems to be talking about a person can achieve some like recognition for 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 religiosity okay uh why why cast that aside like what's so much better about knowing christ than 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 the law and and i and i and it's this first of all um what we what we need is not is not more religion. What we need is Jesus. Like what we need desperately in our souls is not for um, for some like religious superiority and a self righteousness. What we need is God. But our sin has separated us from Him, and so no amount of and, and the reality is no amount of of religious duty or 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 activity or religious heritage can make us right with God. Only Christ can do that. Christ is the one who has died for our sins and reconciles us to God. And so, and so Paul says, I count everything as loss. Like whatever standing he had in some community is not better than having a standing from God that comes by God. And so, so this is, so, um, so here's, here's what God had to, had to reteach me. Um, God had God had to show me that it is not. Um, well, okay, I'll say it this way: what, what's so amazing about the gospel is that God knows us completely, completely, um, including all of our sin, and yet God still chose. Uh, to die for us, He still chose to know us. He still chose to 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 make a way for us to be reconciled to Him. And so, um, 
what's 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 so amazing and, and I think what what can be scary for a lot of us is and, and what's so necessary is is to be known and to be um, and and in order for us to really grab hold of the gospel we have to be honest about it is our sin right um, and that's I, I think I think what what God was teaching me is that like People knowing about my sin is really the scariest part, because if I, I think that it's it's great to be known, but if people know so much about you, what if they what if they reject you? So it's easy then to build up this like religious superiority and to th- and to think that I, well I've grown up in church, I'll show up to all the activities, I'll go to I'll get the education, I'll get all that all of that, and that will get me accepted. That will be what what allows me to belong. But it's actually not it at all. It is better to recognize that because of what, because of who God is and what He has done for us, I, the the Creator God of the universe, knows me completely and accepts me. And anyone who anyone who knows Jesus, that's what's that's what's what's so incredible about the gospel and what Paul's talking about here. Um, and and uh, so let's back up to more broadly Philippians Paul is again Paul is writing to the Philippian church in prison and Paul is talking is is commending them to walk in a manner in a manner worthy of the gospel right and he will further call them uh, uh, to this to be of one mind and of one spirit but if if the gospel is not the foundation of that and all and and if if what church looks like is a bunch of people gathering together just to like and like to be in some sort of um like religious competition uh then what you don't get is rejoicing and you don't get a people that is that is calling by their by the rejoicing by their actions is a light to the world that calls people to a saving knowledge of god you don't get that. You just get like another religion. And look, and here's the deal: like, if you, it, it, some of you know, some of you know me pretty well. I I love motorcycle riding, absolutely love it. Um, if you, if I convince you, okay, to to ride a motorcycle, part of that will be because I love it so much. Like, there's nothing like it. Okay, I love it. Um, uh, like uh, so. The same is true with anything that's deeply important to us, right? If if you if we are going to show the world the light of the truth, we need to actually embody some light. Uh, we need to actually know what the gospel is. We need to know who God is, what God has done for us. Uh, know it so well that we're actually rejoicing in that. That that through whatever trials and and whatever life brings us, we are able to rejoice and go through those things with a calm and a peace that only comes from Christ. And that, uh, Paul will say, is what, uh, is what draws people to us and, and then to God. Um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll end with this. Um, what I, again, what God had to show me, what God had to remind me of is that uh, other people do not justify us based on on our religious activity and heritage. That is not what justifies us. God justifies us through what Christ has done for us, and in that we can rejoice. And this is, and and really that that fits perfectly with what Taylor has said dozens of times. Our responsibility as followers of Jesus is to worship God, and what that means really is to know God and to make him known, right? As, we, as we're growing and as we, as we uh, become uh, a, a larger community, um, this has to be uh, what each of us individually is founded on. It can't be anything but the gospel. It can't, and, and some of you maybe are here because um, you, you just grown up in the church and this is just what you do on Sundays. And, that's, and, and, and at some point, like that's, like, that's fine, you know? But, but what, what needs to happen 
is that you you come to a saving knowledge of Christ. Um, and and listen, if you if 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 you have that and you, and you're not rejoicing um, in that on a regular basis, then really what that's going to end up producing in your life is just fruitlessness. You may you may still be saved, but you won't be generating f- fruit that draw people to God. And that's that's exactly what we're called to do. Um, we're founded on the gospel. You rejoice in the gospel. And in that rejoicing, you draw people. Hey guys, this is Philip Jackson, pastor of Young Adults at Evergreen Baptist Church. I want to invite you to come to Reach. We meet every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. at Evergreen Church in South Tulsa, just east of Mingo on 111th Street. The mission of Reach Tulsa is to cultivate a young adult community that's defined by real transformation and a sincere pursuit of a godly life through training in biblical disciplines, personal development, and intentionally transitioning into independence as mature members of the body of Christ. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like and subscribe to our content. We're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Reach Young Adult Ministry is a part of Evergreen Baptist Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. For more information and additional lessons, please visit our website, evergreenbc.org.